A few weeks ago, we released a video talking about display network ad testing. If you're interested in that, you can check out this video right here. One of the things we talked about in that video are the metrics that you should review when analyzing your ad tests. And a couple of those were around viewability. Now, there's actually a whole set of viewability metrics in Google Ads, and I think it's worth talking through them. I'll be completely honest, I don't think this set of stats is going to completely overhaul the way that you run Google Ads campaigns, but I do think they're important to understand. So in this video, we're gonna go over what the viewability metrics are, how Google comes up with them, and give you some ideas of how to use them in your account. The first thing I wanna talk about is how Google determines which ads are viewable and which ones are not. And in this help article from Google, you can see that they have some technology called Active View for YouTube and certain display network websites and apps that allows the platform to determine if the ad is viewable to potential customers. So these metrics are only gonna be available for video and display, but they do track across a number of different types of placements and give you insights on web pages, devices, and apps. Next, there are some differences between the different types of viewability standards for display and video ads. So we come down here a little bit, we can see the display ad is counted as viewable when at least 50% of its area is visible on the screen for at least one second. There's a note about some very large display ads, but most of you probably not using that. In the video I referred to in the intro, I talked about viewable impressions for display ads specifically for this reason. If you're trying to analyze which ad variants are performing the best, it doesn't make sense to hold it against that ad variant if it wasn't actually visible. In my opinion, seeing only 50% of an ad for one second on a page is a pretty low standard to hit. So in a lot of ways, I really think of viewable impressions as impressions when it comes to the display network. Now, a video ad is a little bit different. A video ad is counted as viewable when at least 50% of the video area is shown while the video is playing for at least two seconds. So it has twice as long of a minimum time on the screen as the display ad does. But again, your video only has to play for at least two seconds, which means that it needs to have loaded. So that's a little bit of a benefit, but you only need to see 50% of the video itself. Again, in my mind, a pretty low bar to hit, but again, it is really helpful that Google has these for us because now we can understand what amount of our campaigns had viewable impressions versus regular impressions or all impressions. And that leads to the difference in some of the actual stats. So let's jump into a client account where we have both display and YouTube running and start to look at some of these different viewability metrics. Now I've only talked about viewable impressions so far, but there's actually an entire section of columns available in Google ads to show you different metrics around viewability. So to find those, we're just gonna come over to the column section and modify our columns. I'm going to get rid of everything that's currently there just because I want this to be as clean as possible looking at only these metrics. So you probably guessed it. We wanna look at this viewability section here. So if I click this arrow, you can see that there are 12 different metrics available in the viewability section. What I'm gonna do is add all of these just in the order that they are in this interface. And then we'll start to look at some stats while we talk about the definitions of each of the metrics. So I've applied all of my viewability metrics for this account. And the first thing you'll notice is that there are a bunch that have zero metrics next to them in a lot of these columns. And that's because those are search campaigns. As we already discussed, viewability metrics are mostly focused on display and YouTube. So you're not gonna find these useful for search campaigns, but as a small caveat, if you are running a search campaign that also runs on the display network, not my favorite, but if it works for you, that's great. You will find these viewability metrics in those campaigns because they run on the display network for at least a portion of the time. To see that performance, you would just need to come over to segment, and then you can come down to network with search partners, and all of the different line items for each network will be broken out, and you'll be able to find your viewable metrics that way. For now, we're gonna stick with these campaigns that we currently have active, and let's start to go through these metrics. First is going to be viewable impressions. A viewable impression, as we've already talked about, is when 50% of your display ad or video is shown and the display ad is visible for at least one second and the YouTube video plays for at least two seconds. That one's pretty straightforward. You can see that as our first column here. The second one is non-viewable impressions. If there are going to be some that are viewable and it's less than your total number of impressions, then by default, some have to be non-viewable. 
And let me go ahead and add the regular impressions number here, just so we have something to compare it to. So as you can see for this display campaign here, that's for remarketing, we have 15,510 impressions. Of those, a little over 12,000 were viewable and about 3,200 were non-viewable. Now, if you're curious what the percentage is of the non-viewable and viewable impressions, there are already stats that calculate that for you. Now we're gonna hop over to viewable impression distribution. If we hover over this, viewable impression distribution is the percentage of your total ad impressions, so that first column, that were considered viewable. So this 77.96% that you can see right below this window is the ratio of the little over 12,000 impressions to the 15,500. That is effectively the viewable rate. Additionally, non-viewable impression distribution, pretty self-explanatory. That's basically the number of non-viewable impressions divided by total impressions. Now, to those of you who are really good at adding up big numbers in your head, you probably noticed that the little over 12,000 impressions and 3,200 impressions doesn't quite add up to the 15,510. And that brings us to our next set of stats. That's going to be about measurable impressions. So you'll remember in that help article that Google said it uses ActiveView to measure which ads are viewable but not every ad placement is going to actually be measurable. There are gonna be some YouTube ads, some display ads, where they simply can't use that active view tool for one reason or another. And there's going to be a handful of impressions that are not measurable. So a measurable impression basically just means the number of times your ad appeared in locations on websites or apps that could be measured for viewability. So here you can see, we had about 15,311 out of the 15,510 that were measurable, which then leaves 199, which are non-measurable impressions, which you guessed it, just represents the number of times that your ad was in a location that it wasn't able to measure for viewability. Overall, this is a pretty healthy measurable rate, which is going to be this number here. As you can see, we have a 98.72% measurable rate, meaning we had 98, almost 99% of the impressions that we had in this campaign were measurable. So we can back into some viewability stats. You'll then notice that there are some stats over here that are non-measurable impression distribution, which is basically the opposite of measurable rate. So we'll see that the 1.28% plus 98.72 adds up to 100. But effectively, non-measurable impression distribution just means the percentage of your total impressions that were not able to be measured for viewability. Pretty simple. So a couple other stats that we have in here, because I think we've gone through most of them. Measurable cost just shows the total cost of all impressions that were measurable, whether they were viewed or not. So you could compare this to your overall campaign spend and see how that compares. Same thing is going to be true with average viewable CPM. This is the cost per thousand impressions when your ads were viewable as opposed to total CPM. And then we have viewable CTR, which means the click-through rate when your ad was viewable. I know I keep referring back to it, but in that display ad testing video that I talked about in the intro, I highly suggested you use viewable CTR when comparing the click-through rate of one group of ads versus another, simply because it makes sense to compare the click-through rate when something was viewable as opposed to when it wasn't. It's just not quite fair. And then the last metric that we have is gonna be all the way over here off to the right, which got scooted over whenever I added a column. And that's just gonna be the viewable rate. And this is the percentage of your measurable impressions that were viewable. So effectively, it is taking viewable impressions divided by measurable impressions and then giving you this rate. So here we start to see a little bit of a difference between the two types of campaigns. So our display campaign had only a 79% viewable rate, but our YouTube ads were in the low 90s pretty consistently. So now that we've got an overview here, we might be thinking, what can we actually do with these? The first I've already alluded to, and that's going to be ad testing. I hopped into a different a client account just so we had a little bit better stats to look at here. And now you can start to see how the viewable impressions and viewable click-through rate can either be right in line or can vary drastically between different ad variants. So all of these ads are running against each other in the same types of campaigns, but they've all got different ad sizes and dimensions and messages and that sort of thing. So we're gonna see some variance, but if we were to analyze performance, we would wanna make sure that every time we're comparing click-through rate, use viewable click-through rate. Because as you can see for these first two, the click-through rate and viewable click-through rate are identical. But then as we go further down, we start to see some variance. 
Now these might not seem like a big deal, but overall it would be important to know if your click-through rate is 0.22 or 0.26, or is a little bit bigger variance here. We've got 0.34 versus 0.40%. Now, while all of these still trend in the right direction, there are differences in variance. These are off by six hundredths of a percent. These are off by five, while these others are off by only four. There are even some ones down at the bottom that are off by two. And without looking at these stats, you wouldn't know the difference between these different click-through rates. Now, granted, in this specific account, there wouldn't be a difference in winner if the only metric we went off of was click-through rate, but I've seen in a handful of accounts where the viewable click-through rate is quite a bit different than the actual click-through rate and ended up changing the results of the ad test that we were running. Another way of using these different viewability metrics is actually in bidding. If I were to create a new display campaign, for example, and for this point, we're going to keep these different CPMs in mind. Right now it's at $45, $46. If I create that new display campaign, we'll do it without a goal. We'll choose display, skip the conversion actions, and move directly to bidding. The default for this account, because we have conversions set up, is going to be to focus on conversions. But if you wanted to bid for CPM, you can choose from the drop down here and you can optimize for viewable impressions. And then here you can set up your CPM bid based on the ad group in the campaign. So in this case, you would want to use some number for your CPM bid that is comparable to that $45, $46 viewable CPM that we saw in the campaign. Because without that, you're likely not going to be able to compete as well as you have for that existing campaign. So it can definitely help you understand what your benchmarks need to be for bidding toward viewable impressions. Now, the last thing I have is for you to use this to help you find better targeting options. Now, whether that is based on the cost per audience, or if that's going to be based on actual engagement of viewability, or understanding which types of placements have better viewability, you can use all of these to help influence what your targeting options are going to be. For this example, let's just say we're trying to find the lowest cost audience to reach out into. I just went over to the audience tab, broke out all the segments by the account view. Sorry, the names are blurred out, but you don't need to know what they are. And then I have all of our viewability metrics here, and you can start to see which audiences are the easiest to target. And you can start to see which audiences have the associated cost. At a really high level, without going too far into all of the lists that are here, this customer list is really expensive compared to this customer list, which has a lot more users in it, even if we're not sending as much budget to it. But it's also a lot more expensive than our custom intent audiences that we have up here at the top. Almost $8 versus something in the low to mid $1 range is quite a bit different. Additionally, we can see that we have a much better viewable CTR for these custom intents than we do for either of these customer lists. Now, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be using these in conjunction with each other, because depending on which audience you're using, you might have a different goal. But if we were to look and see which types of audiences we should be reaching out into, even just comparing the two custom intent audiences, we can have some takeaways here. This first one is focusing on competitor custom intent. So we're seeing a pretty good viewable click-through rate, and the cost per thousand impressions isn't too much higher than this other set, which is based on just non-brand solution types of keywords. Now that might sound like a good audience to go after, and it is a little bit cheaper, but we're not seeing quite as good of a viewable click-through rate. So if we really, for some reason, see better conversions coming from that competitors group, it might make sense for us to say we have better conversion quality, the click-through rate is higher, and the cost is only a touch higher. Or if we're just going for the cheapest reach and we're trying to meet a minimum threshold, it might make sense to go after the more solution-based keywords approach. Now this might be a pretty nuanced example, but just start to think about how you can compare a custom intent audience versus different affinity audiences compared to remarketing lists. Which groups of people have better performance based on these viewable metrics and different costs so that when it comes down to focusing your budget, you know exactly where to spend it to get the most bang for your buck. But as I said in the intro, overall, these viewability metrics are probably not going to overhaul the entire way that you're running your Google Ads campaigns, not even specifically for display and YouTube where they're eligible but I do think it's important for you to understand how they work and be able to take a look in here if something looks fishy in any of your stats, or if you're trying to lean into areas of your account that actually do perform better, not only based on total volume of impressions, but actually when something was viewed and something could be seen and something could be measured. 
So if you have any additional questions about any of the viewability metrics in Google Ads, or quite frankly, any of the other metrics in Google Ads, feel free to leave us a question in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.